Shall we read the scripture together, please? In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw also the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. Above him stood the seraphim, each one holding six wings. With two he covered his face. And with twain he covered his feet, and with twain he did fly. And one cried unto another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the posts of the door moved at the voice of him that cried. And the house was filled with smoke. Then he said, I, Woe is me, for I am undone. like to say a prayer for Chaplain Kevin. Dear Heavenly Father, we're just grateful for this gathering today. We're so thankful that yes, yes. the chaplain could join us. We pray for traveling mercies on his return to North Carolina, and we just pray that his words today would resonate with each and every one of us, and may your message and your words be glorified. In Christ's name, amen. Amen. Thank you, sir. Good morning. Good morning. I said to... Many up here, you're a happy and hugging bunch. <laughs> I like that. If you didn't get your hand shaken or you didn't get a hug, it's, it's not the body's fault. <laughs> God bless you. Um, David, King David said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Did your heart skip a little bit when you came in here today? You knew that you made the right choice to get out and come on out to the fellowship of God. Amen? Amen. That's good. I do not have a southern accent. I've been down there 30 years. So don't give me this, you changed and you sound like a hick and all that. No, don't do that to me. But um, I'll share a moment. How did I get here? You know, the Lord sent me. Uh, the Bible says uh, the steps of a good man, I hope I try to be a good man, are ordered by the Lord and he delights in his way. So I'm sitting in my backyard in Salem Lake. Uh, backyard, nice fire pit there, no fire, one Sunday afternoon, and I'm looking up, and I, I saw this red-tailed hawk circling, and it's the f only second time, 30-some years on the property, I saw a, red, uh, a hawk come there. I'm looking up, and my phone rings, and it's my brother. He said, hey, we got something going on. I said, what's going on? He told me about this church. Would you be interested in pos I said, sure, you know, because I'm scared not to. If God, if God says come, you don't, you, don't re, you don't resist, right? You say, well, if the Lord wants me to go, I'll go. I'll say yes because I'm afraid not to. I don't want to be struck with a lightning bolt, right? Saying, oh, no, I've got to go. If the Lord wants me to go, I'm going to go and do my best to share the word. So I'm sitting there. The phone rings, and then I got a nice call from Mr. Scott Tester. Then I got another couple calls from Miss Debbie, and uh, that's how we got here today. But who is Kevin Weinmiller? Kevin Weinmiller is the sinner saved by grace. And I want to tell you, I ran headlong into my Methodist grandmother, Winnie Bertie Weinmiller, who received Jesus Christ as her Lord and Savior in 1913 under the preaching of a Methodist circuit rider. Oh, Whew! <laughs> if, if that don't ring your bell, your clacker's busted. <laughs> but um, it's same Lord, same... Same God, same God wants to work here today as in the old time meetings. Wouldn't you love to be in that old Methodist circuit ride meeting? And say, here he comes. He's moving in on the horse, and you know, he gets off the horse and brings the word. I, I love that. But um, this beautiful vision here, I say I had a vision. And we're going to concentrate on verse 3, 5, and 8 today. But 
I want to ask you, uh, do you have a vision of God? You're, if you're breathing, you're not dead yet. Oh, you can say amen right there. Amen. <laughs> the Lord is not finished with you. I heard there was an old geezer around here, 90 years old. I said, well, he's a young man. Moses with 120. Ooh, I like that. You get three score and ten. I met a guy here, three score and ten. We won't say his name or nothing. But his name is John Brooks. <laughs> Wouldn't want to call anybody out or embarrass him. But he's pretty happy about being the big 7 0. I'm not there yet, but that's good. I like that. So let me tell you something. When I knocked on my grandmother's door at 70, she was 79 and I was 18. She had one more mission, and you're looking at him. <laughs> and uh, my brother knows the story. I'm going to tell you stuff about my brother you never knew today. Just kidding. <laughs> he's, made, he's, he's like, oh, I'm going to kill you. But I will tell you one thing. His real name's not Rick. His real name is Cork. <laughs> no, it's not. It's a nickname, and my father gave to him uh, in the early 60s. I understand the story. Uh, there was a cartoon, and the little boy's name was Cork. And for some reason, my dad named, nicknamed my brother that, and that's what I heard, my dad calling him that. That's all I've ever called him. <laughs> so when I get around and say, hey, Cork, and then someone will say, what do he call you? <laughs> so, uh, so now the cat's out of the bag. <laughs> Isaiah was a prophet. He had an encounter. He went to the temple, and he saw a vision, a vision of God. And so I was thinking about this vision. I thought, what did Isaiah see? And what, what do I see? So let's apply it to ourselves. He says, I heard the voice of the Lord. He, he said, he saw the, the holiness of God. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. When we get a vision of God's holiness, the next thing is we see our own sinfulness. Isn't that, isn't that so much? When we get into the light, that's why people think, I'm not going to church. All those people are religious down there. Well, join the crowd. If, you, if you're a sinner, come on in. Amen? Amen. Because the Apostle Paul, Paul he, he felt like he was the biggest sinner in the house. But I want to tell you, God's grace is sufficient. He can reach us right where we are. So here's Isaiah here. He says in verse 3, he says, um, I got to use my glasses. I stood up in, uh, um, one time and didn't have my glasses on. But I love this here in verse 3 in Isaiah 6. Holy, 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 he says it three times. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. The first thing Isaiah saw was the holiness of God. That's good. He recognized that God is holy. He said, be holy for I am holy. He saw God's holiness. Holy, holy, holy. And then look in verse 5, he says this. Then said I, woe is me. Do you see Isaiah maybe just trembling here a little bit? And shaking and at the presence and the holiness of God. Woe is me. He didn't look at his, his brother and say, look at that sinner. He didn't look at his sister and say, look at that sinner. Oh, I'm supposed to be remaining steady, but <laughs> sorry, guys. I'm not supposed to walk around. I'll try to remain in this position. Isaiah saw the holiness of God. Isn't it good you can have a good time in the house of God? Amen. Isn't that good? You don't have to come in here all tight. You know, this is good. You can be free in the house of God. Isaiah saw God's holiness, and then he saw his sinfulness. He says in verse 5, I am undone. I'm a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. And he said, for my eyes have seen the king. Someone say, that's good. That's good. My eyes have seen the king, the Lord of hosts. Then the, this spectacular display with the angels and the and the fire off the altar and then in verse 8 he says also I heard the voice of the Lord saying whom shall I send who will go for us so here's the natural response what do you see well Isaiah saw a vision he saw a vision of the holiness of God and the first thing that hit him was his own sinfulness when you get a glimpse of God when you get in his word and you realize through his spirit you are broken. Jesus Christ came to the earth to seek and to save that which was lost. And that would be all of us. And he came to put that peace back together, to fill that emptiness in our heart, that hole that only God can fill. Isn't that beautiful? Isaiah, he saw the holiness of God, and then he saw his sinfulness. 
he realized that he was a broken man. And he, re he took responsibility. He didn't say, well, because of this and because of that, he didn't give a hundred excuses. He says, Lord, I'm just standing before you and I'm unclean, I'm broken. And then the natural response in verse eight, Isaiah heard this voice. Also, he says, I heard the voice of the Lord saying, whom shall I send? It said, who will go for us? It's like God's talking, right? Us. There's the Trinity right there. Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Isaiah, I heard the voice of the Lord after he saw God's holiness, his own sinfulness. Also, I heard the voice of the Lord saying, who will go for us? And then he volunteered. Don't you like that? He raised his hand and he said, here am I, Lord, send me. So I'm applying this to myself and as we apply these scriptures to ourselves today, what do you see when you see the holiness of God? Do you get alone sometime and just have, get in the book, get in the word, right? Get you up and get you some Proverbs wisdom, right? And then go get some Psalm for the heart, Proverbs for the head, Psalm for the heart. And then go, go uh, put a marker, say, how do I read the Bible? Start anywhere, it's all good. Put a marker in the Old Testament and a marker in the New Testament and just start reading the Word of God. Let the Word of God saturate your heart, saturate your mind. Isaiah had nowhere to go. He had nowhere to go but surrender. There's no getting out of this. If you know Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior, He's coming back one day. If you've been to Israel and Israel's in our prayers, I had the privilege to go there in 2001. That's my water. Many times throughout the trip, the tour, when you go to the sites, sometimes you have that epiphany, that one moment where you say, this is why I came. There was an old gentleman on the bus. His name was Henry Hackler. He's with the Lord now. He was probably 82 years old. and Henry was a big boy. He was north of 270. I mean, he was a big boy. And when it came time to get off the bus and go down the Via Della Rosa, the way of suffering, the cobblestone streets, he could walk, but he had his wheelchair there, and he had his walker. And I said, Henry, what are you doing? It's time. Let's go. Let's take the trip. Let's walk down the Via, Rel Vel Via Della Rosa together. He said, oh, Kevin. He says, I can't do it. He said, I can't do it. I said, Henry, you didn't come this far to stay on the bus. <laughs> so we got old Henry off that bus. We got him in his wheelchair. And of course, I was elected to push him. And I was, I was pushing old Henry, Henry Hackler, down the Via Della Rosa down the Via Della Rosa, the way of suffering where Christ, he carried the cross for you and he carried the cross for me. And we're bouncing down those cobblestone streets there. And Henry started to get happy. I said, Henry, this is it. This is where Christ carried the cross for us in this great. And he says, whoo, whoo, He started going, whoo, whoo, And old, big old Henry started bouncing in that wheelchair. And it was a warm May day. May day. And I was, I was, oh, I said, that's right, Henry. Go ahead, help yourself, help yourself. And I'm bouncing old Henry down the cobblestone streets, and he's getting happy. I said, oh, my goodness. I said, this is a long way. And this, this man is not a lightweight. And I, the joy of my life was pushing old Henry down the Via Della Rosa in his wheelchair. I said, Henry, you had that moment. He's with the Lord now. He could, he's all fine. He's, everything's good with Henry now. But that was a moment for me. I said, you know, Jesus Christ walked down these cobblestone streets for me. He had, you have name tags here. <laughs> no name tags in heaven. Isn't that good? Everybody know anybody. Hey! Hey! Oh, you made it! God! Hey! <laughs> no, but, but um, he, know, he knows where you are today. He knows where you're sitting. He knows your name. Isn't that, isn't that powerful? He knows your name. Isaiah had a vision. Stop and see the holiness of God. Isaiah had another revelation was, well, I am undone. The Bible says all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. That means we've all missed the mark. Hey, if there's, there was only one man perfect and they put him on a cross. Of course, in the military, you know, you get, you get all, all stripes in the military. And it's a ministry, right? And when I hear someone in, uh, someone in the army would take the Lord's name in vain, they would say Jesus Christ, but they didn't mean is Lord. I would complete the sentence. I would say, is Lord. So, oh, yeah, that's the chaplain, you know. Yeah. You gotta, that's the chaplain over there. Oh, yeah, is Lord. I don't take my father's name in vain. <laughs> that's right. Jesus Christ is Lord. Isaiah, he had a vision of God. He had a powerful, like, uh, life-changing. It might be not that dy dy dynamic for you, 
maybe when you got alone one day and you realized you were a sinner, that Christ died for you and rose again and you made that commitment to him. You might have been four or five years old in a Sunday school class when that Sunday school teacher shared with you the love of Jesus. You said, I want some of that. I want to put my faith and trust in Jesus Christ. Isaiah had a vision of God. Don't we just need to pause sometime and see holy, holy, holy in a sinful world? Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. Anytime scripture repeats itself, three words, three times, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. And then it's like, oh, this is it. Isaiah says, it's getting pretty hot in here. When you hang around the holiness of God, then you do some introspection and some reflection, and then you realize we, you are a sinner. And there's nowhere to go from there. He just doesn't leave us hanging. God has a conversation in verse 8, doesn't he? Also, I heard the voice of the Lord saying, whom shall I send? Oh, it's volunteer time. It's like we're getting a team together. We're calling out. We're having tryouts this morning. God's saying, whom shall I send? Oh, you guys like football. Can't get, wait, get home and watch the NFL. You want some football. You like some college ball. You like some high school. If, if, the, if the pads are on and the helmets are hitting, you're ready to go, right? Well, let me tell you something. God's putting a team together this morning. He's looking for volunteers. And the harvest, he says, is white. It's white. That means it's a little past due. If there's someone you need to share the love of Christ with, you need to hand a piece of bread to, you need to do something for, be the hands and be the feet now in this time. The only reason you're, not, you're here is to serve Jesus Christ on this earth. I agree. Thank you. That's, that's good preaching if I'm doing it myself. Thank you very much. <laughs> but Isaiah was great. He said, oh, God, what am I going to do? I see your holiness. I see, I see my own sinfulness. What do you see this morning? You see a vision of God? What do you see? I added that on. What do you see? Not just a vision of God. Then I said, well, I need to ask myself the question. What do I see? A vision of God. Isaiah said, Lord, I want to be part of this great team, this great army, the Christians in the earth. We're the salt and we're the light. I like that. Salt and light. That's good. Salt, it, salt is like, adds flavor, right? Right? And the light, wow, the illumination, this is great. We're salt and we're light. But salt, sometimes it hurts, doesn't it? Sometimes that you get to speak the truth, it's going to hurt. It's going to hurt them, and they might want to hurt you. But the salt and the light, you go around like with your salt shaker. Oh, a little salt shaker, a little salt shaker. Pour a little salt here, put a little salt there, and let that light shine. In Bible college, I was really into it, you know. I memorized probably um, a verse a day in the first two years I gave my life to Christ. And I walked into a room one time, and the guy says, turn it down, turn it down. I said, what are you talking about? He says, your face is shining. Turn it down. I said, no, I'm just trying to shine the light. I'm shining the, the light over here. And they're like, oh, turn it down, turn it down. Wouldn't it be great? And he walks, what's going on with you? Well, I want to tell you something. I'm not on drugs this morning, amen? amen. There is no high like the most high. Right. What you see here is all natural. <laughs> hey, yeah. God has been good to me. Um, Isaiah, he saw God's holiness. He saw a vision of God. What do you see this morning? Everybody's awake. Nobody's sleeping. That's good. That's good. Do you see your own sinfulness? I humbly ask you, after you see God's holiness, and then verse 8, oh, he, he couldn't get out of it. Coach was ready. God, he was recruiting. Whom shall I send and who will go for us? Pause. Isaiah is listening to this conversation of the Trinity calling, calling. Who will go for us? And can't you see Isaiah busting in the conversation? Say, hear my Lord. Send me. Wow. Send me. I want to tell you a little story about a guy I grew up with. Can you flash that on the screen? This guy's name is Derek. Derek and I grew up together. We were close. Derek had a great home, and he had a great family. He had everything he needed. But Derek made the wrong choices. You can see the pain in his face. What do you see in that face? You see pain? Somebody tell me, what do you see, loneliness? I'm supposed to not move. Excuse me. You're fine. You're okay there. Thank you. And Derek, um, about 13 years old, he started to get into drugs and everything the world had. 
And for the next four years, uh, he told me it was like the dark ages of his life. Um, had everything, had a wonderful home, had all the food he needed to eat. He had a nice bed, great mom, great dad, great family, sibling. But Derek got off the path. He got off the path. Some of your grandchildren may be like Derek. You're praying for him, right? And my dear grandmother, Winnie, Winnie Bertie Weinmiller was her name. Isn't that nice? Winnie Bertie Weinmiller, born in 1900, accepted Christ in 1913. Winnie played the accordion. How cool is that? Oh, Winnie playing that accordion. Awesome. And Winnie could play the piano. And she was like royalty. Winnie, I mean, when there was an event, Winnie had seven children, one of them, our father, five boys, two girls, and raised seven children through the Great Depression. Can you imagine? My dad was born 28. All the kids were born, bam, bam, out right away. Winnie's husband, Raymond Weinmiller, was born in 1896. We're going back about three centuries here. He was a World War I doughboy. That was Raymond. And a Pennsylvania coal miner. And he was a scrapper. And uh, Winnie, Winnie got everything. She got him in line, shall we say. <laughs> Winnie was tough. Everything in her house was perfect. Knickknacks, no dust, everything was perfect. And one day, this guy, Derek, <laughs> oh, I didn't tell you. My first name's Kevin. My last name's Weinmiller. Does anybody want to guess my middle name? You don't, you don't count. <laughs> Did you figure it out? <laughs> That's me. At 17 years old, Jesus Christ can change your life. Jesus Christ can take a dope-smoking hippie, a rebel, a sinner. Whoa, is me like Isaiah. Where do I go from here? He can take a sinner like that. You see the confusion in that face? That was 17 years old. You don't want to, you don't want to meet that guy. You don't want to talk to him. No, it wouldn't have been a good. No. Rebel. Rebel. That picture was a, from a track as a freshman in Bible college called Putting It Together. Though your life is the wrong uh, pieces, your life this morning may feel like a bunch of pieces. And that's what the world is. They're saying, oh, I got a piece here. No, only Christ can put it together. And I have some of those tracks. Putting it together. Only Jesus Christ can take those pieces. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things are passed away. Isn't that beautiful? All things become new. Jesus Christ can make you brand new. Isn't that, isn't that sweet? Isn't that precious? Jesus Christ can take a lost sinner like Isaiah and like Kevin Derek Weinmiller. I had you going, didn't I? Did I, did I, have you going? I can only tell that story once here, so I can't do it again. <laughs> but I was going to mess with you a little bit. But um, I had everything I needed and chose to go away from my home and to do what, what the world says you need to do to be happy. And I'll tell you, only Jesus Christ equals J-O-Y, joy. The scripture says joy, joy unspeakable and full of glory. There's nothing like the fellowship of the house of God. Go ahead and bring yourself in here hurting. Bring yourself in here broken. Let Jesus be the medicine for your soul. That's good. I like that. Isaiah said, who, he heard, whom shall I send? Who will go for us? Here, my Lord, send me. So now it's like we've recruited. We've seen the holiness of God. We see the sinfulness of ourselves. There's nowhere to go except to him. Here, my Lord, send me. Fifteen years of hard time. United States Army. <laughs> <laughs> I loved every minute of it. As a chaplain, you don't look, you don't look too, uh, too nervous. I said, well, I'm just praying getting into the bunker and there's 13 other people and it should be like six in a bunker when the mortars are coming in. Yeah. Everybody's praying. I didn't find one atheist in that foxhole. <laughs> it's amazing. And I didn't say I couldn't get in there. Uh, there's a black guy in there. I can't go in there. I was diving in. I said, oh, there's a, there's a, there's a Mexican. I can't go in there. No, we don't look at it like that. Red, yellow, black, and white. He it's, we are precious in his sight, amen? amen. And uh, I, I, I had some great experiences in, uh, as a youth pastor, 39 nationalities in our church in Patterson, New Jersey, three years. What training? 
and I was a white boy from Ohio. <laughs> I said, hey, what's that? That's, that's lunch. Oh, okay. <laughs> Let's eat. Time to eat. But um, Jesus Christ can take all that evil, all that hatred, all that prejudice away. Isn't that beautiful? And then you're going to realize, like Isaiah, I'm just a sinner like everybody else. Just come on in. Join hands. I appreciate what you're doing here. Rooted in Christ Fellowship Church. That's a good name for a church. Absolutely. And I'm just one coming along today to encourage you. Say, you're not done yet. This is not, the, this is not, this is the beginning. I told one of your, your folks here, I said, this church is like a new baby. Woo! Your little baby, taking the little baby, you want to go and show it off, right? Oh, look at, you got one baby and you got 14 women following the baby, you know? Everybody's carrying something and it's like, woo! This is exciting what God's doing here. And I know you're talking. I know you're talking. The Lord uh, kind of moved you down the street and said, I'm not done with you yet. That's good. I'm starting to get glory bumps on my, on my goosebumps this morning. <laughs> go ahead. Go ahead. The Lord's got something for you. Go ahead and volunteer. Get a vision. What do you see? A vision of the Holy Spirit, God, of your own sinfulness. Deal with it. And then surrender. It always leads to something. He just doesn't say, hey, you know, I, I'm going to call you and just have a seat. No, just have a seat for a little bit. Now get up and serve, right? Your hands, your feet, wherever your sphere of influence is. And by the grace of God, folks, the Lord has allowed me to take this message of the cross to 58 countries, to God be the glory, and share the gospel of Jesus Christ. I will tell you, the message is powerful. The message is strong. The message will not fail. Isn't that beautiful? What do you see this morning? Let's all get a vision of the holiness of God. God bless you.